a seafaring man, the hoisting of this particular combination of flags spells L-I-M, a signal indicating that there is contagious disease aboard and that the port health officer is required. This is necessary in order that the master can obtain his pratique, which is the right to go ahead, unload his cargo, and permit his crew to go ashore. At Gravesend, the watchful hulk Hygieia, insignificant looking, and with the ambulance launch Howard Dayton standing by, is the headquarters of the Port Health Authority. The news of our ship is received and passed on to the medical officer, who immediately prepares to answer the call. On some days, many calls of a similar nature are received. Preparations completed, the Port Health Officer starts on his way to meet, and we may hope, defeat one of London's unseen enemies. Without loss of time, the skipper enters the wheelhouse, and away we go, full speed towards our destination. All this is just routine, for be the weather fair or foul, be it night or day, this service goes on uninterruptedly. The Hyger is quickly left behind, and passing craft of many types bringing service to us from near and far, a sharp lookout is kept for our ship carrying the LIM. We are now some distance on our journey, and it should soon be coming into view. Ah, there she is. As we draw alongside, the medical officer clambers aboard. A hazardous proceeding for a landlubber may be, but to him, all in the day's work. Awaiting him on the deck is the ship's master, and together they run over the declaration of health form. He then takes leave of the master in order to examine the suspect. And although this is a very rare occurrence, he concludes that the patient is definitely a plague suspect a menace to the health of anyone with whom he might come in contact. Consequently, he is immediately ordered to the Port Isolation Hospital. While the rest of the crew are being examined by the medical officer, the patient is made ready for removal. We have little doubt he never expected to go ashore in this manner. But there it is, fate sometimes plays funny tricks with all of us. The transferring patient to the launch whilst underway is a very tricky operation, calling for careful timing and great skill in handling. Well, my man, you seem all right, but you'll have to go into quarantine. By now, the patient is carefully stowed away in the launch's comfortable ambulance compartment. And the doctor having rejoined us, there is but one object in view to get the patient as quickly as possible to hospital. After a short run, we arrive at the special pier of the Port Isolation Hospital with its seemingly endless causeway leading to that wonderful temple of healing for which so many seamen have reason to be truly thankful. The doctor now hurries away to the hospital where more work awaits him leave the patient in the hands of the ambulance crew. With every care and consideration, they bring the unlucky seaman ashore, for they are indeed expert at putting a patient at ease and inspiring him with confidence. Then, on this bleak November afternoon, against a background of grey skies and the hazy outline of shipping, the last stage of his journey to hospital commences. Somewhat of a trick for a patient with a high temperature, but unavoidable. At the end, he will receive that skilled attention which he so sorely needs and which, thanks to the hospital staff's unremitting devotion to duty, will ensure him every chance of recovery and a new lease of life. And London is protected from a dangerous invader. Another important official is the rodent officer. He searches vessels for rat traces and determines the probable extent of infestation. Rats are not only destructive, but are also disease carriers, and the greatest care is taken to destroy them. In this instance, fumigation has been ordered. This work is carried out under the supervision of the Port Health Inspector, in cooperation with expert ship fumigators. Warning notices that fumigation is in preparation are displayed. 
prussic acid is to be used. However, before this process commences, the ship's personnel is checked off the vessel. Here, the chief officer is signing the necessary document, certifying that all personnel have gone ashore. This leaves the fumigators in charge. The necessary sealing up having been completed, the ship's holes are now ready for gas treatment. Prussic acid gas is one of the most deadly of gases, and all engaged on this operation are compelled to use carefully adjusted gas masks. The gas nozzle having been tested, the signal is given and the work of destruction commences. No living thing can survive in the poisonous vapor now being pumped into the hole, and the experts know just how long to continue this process. After a lapse of time, these will be opened, and a series of tests made to ensure no gas remains, after which a gas-free certificate will be issued, enabling the crew to return. For rats that come ashore in cargo, a different technique is required. Pre-baiting is used, consisting of soaked biscuit rusks, which are laid down for three or four nights. After this, poison bait is laid in the same positions. As each bait is an estimated meal for one rat, the amount consumed estimates the number killed. The Port Health Authority is also responsible for many things connected with the ship itself. Here, an inspector is making a routine examination of conditions below deck. Ventilation, lighting, type, position and general cleanliness of the storerooms, etc. For everyone will agree that the men who sail in these ships over the seven seas are assuredly entitled to enjoy during their journeyings the maximum degree of comfort and the highest possible standard of hygiene. The inspector has discovered that the ship's flour is infested with weevil and is advising the ship's steward on the latest methods of preventing this. With the chief officer, he now inspects the crew accommodation for general layout, cubic capacity, bunk measurements, heating, hygiene, washing and fresh water facilities. When eventually he has completed his inspection of the vessel, he will, if necessary, forward recommendations for improvement to the owners, for in these days it is recognized that healthy conditions below deck are essential to the happy life of our merchant seamen. Government regulations lay down that an adequate and efficient staff must always be available for examining and making sure of the wholesomeness of all imported foodstuffs, and in this room, dealing solely with meat, the task is carried out with complete thoroughness. This is definitely reassuring in these days when so much of our meat has to be imported. The incising of certain shoulder glands for the detection of disease is one of the tests which is always made. Another test is made by splitting the carcass down the center of the backbone in order to examine the inner substance. A bandsaw makes light work of this job. Rejected carcasses are sent to approved firms and used for industrial purposes, such as soap making. The keen eye of the examiner is expert at spotting any offal unfit for food. This ceaseless care keeps many dangerous unseen enemies from our homes. Imported canned goods also receive careful examination for condition and the presence of prohibited preservative or coloring matter. The tin container is examined externally for signs of denting, leakage and rust. The caps or ends are pressed, and if in a convex condition, this indicates the presence of gas-producing bacteria. All such tins are always rejected. If the presence of prohibited preservative or coloring matter is suspected, the consignment is stopped pending the result of analysis. So, as we close, let us salute the Port of London Health Authority for all that work, which, unspectacular though it may be, is invaluable in warding off the many dangers to which we should otherwise be exposed.